Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing hypoxia. Now, this is part one of a two part video series on hypoxia. So stay tuned for the upcoming video. If you guys haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe to our channel because we're posting brand new content every single day, practically in uh, regards to your medical education and the stuff you need to know for your medical tests in med school and beyond. So with that being said, let's discuss part one of hypoxia by reviewing cellular injury. Now, one one thing you need to remember is that our cells are able to handle a certain amount of stress, but when you have too much stress placed upon our cells, our cells are going to get damaged. So cellular injury occurs when the level of stress placed upon a cell exceeds our cells' ability to adapt, regardless of what ad adaptation mechanisms they have, whether it's uh, hypertrophy or hyperplasia or metaplasia. If you have too much stress being placed upon an organ or a, a cell, our organ and cells are going to get damaged, and that's where you see cellular injury occurring. Now, there are many different ranges of injury, and they all are going to vary based off of the extent of the type of cell, sorry, the extent of injury is going to vary based off of the type of cell, the type of stress, and the severity of the stress. Most importantly, it's the severity of the stress that you need to remember, okay? Now, certain cells in our body, like neurons, are going to be more susceptible to stress, whereas other cells, like our muscle cells, are going to be more resilient to stress. And why is that the case? Essentially, in my mind, I like to think of what are the most essential cells in our body, like neurons, like myocardial cells, right? My myocardial uh, myocytes. Um, those cells are essentially so important, right? Without neurons, we can't function. Without our cardiac myocytes, we cannot pump blood and our heart cannot survive. Those are vital organs. So those cells, which are uh, very important, which are very essential for our day-to-day -day function for our life, cannot handle stress because they are heavily relied upon in our body. Whereas other cells, like muscle cells, like our skin cells, etc., they're able to handle more stress because they're able to pull back and say, yo, I'm not that important right now. I can chill out. I'm going to let these essential cells do their thing. I'm going to let them have all of the nutrients they need to survive. And then when we're at a normal state, I can come back and I can get some nutrients. That's why you have certain cells that are way more susceptible and a little bit of cellular injury causes a lot of damage, whereas other cells are more resilient like muscle cells where a little injury, they can recover, they can handle, they have more reserves, okay? So there are different causes of cellular injury you need to be aware of like hypoxia, inflammation, malnourishment, genetic mutation, trauma. The rest of these we're going to be discussing in subsequent lectures later on. Right now, we are going to be discussing hypoxia, so let's just dive right into it. Hypoxia is a condition in which our body or a region in our body is actually deprived of adequate oxygen supply, especially especially at the tissue level. That's very important. Now, low oxygen usually is the cause of hypoxia. And when you have low oxygen delivery to tissues, you're going to see a lot of damage occurring. And why is that the case? Mainly because our tissues are very dependent on oxygen. Now, we're going to go back to your undergrad days. We're going to go back to biochemistry, which I know everyone hates discussing and everyone hates that subject, but we're going to simplify it for you so you can digest it and remember this content really well. Go back to biochemistry and think back to electron transport chain. And you might remember that oxygen is the final electron acceptor in the electron transport chain. What does that mean? Well, because it's the final electron acceptor, it's the, it's the main reason why we're able to generate ATP. And if you have a lack of oxygen, you're not going to be able to accept the final electron. Therefore, a lack of oxygen is going to lead to impaired oxidative phosphorylation. And that just means you have low ATP which also means you have low energy, okay? And low ATP slash low energy is going to cause a cellular injury and can lead to cellular, cellular death. So what are the causes of hypoxia? You already probably know that there are a myriad of causes, but all of those causes can be categorized into essentially three main categories. And those three categories are ischemia, hypoxemia, which is very important you understand that hypoxemia and hypoxia are different, and you have decreased oxygen carrying capacity. So these uh, latter two concepts, right? Hypoxemia and decreased oxygen carrying capacity are going to be discussed in part two of this lecture series. Right now, we're going to continue this lecture by discussing ischemia, and then we'll wrap up part one. Like I said, we want to make this very easy, very uh, digestible for your understanding so that you can get this, uh, this basic concept 
locked down in your memory, in your brain, and you can move forward and you don't forget it and you understand it really well. That's the whole, that's the whole concept behind breaking up these uh, uh, two videos. All right, so let's talk about ischemia. Ischemia is when you have insufficient blood flow to a tissue. Okay, remember we said hypoxia occurs at the tissue level and ischemia occurs at the tissue level as well and it is essentially not enough blood going to the tissue. Now when that happens, you're gonna see, like I said earlier, cellular injury occurring. Now there are three main mechanisms of ischemia. Number one, you can have decreased blood going to an organ, which is just gonna be a blockade of the arterial system. Number two, you can have decreased blood coming from an organ, which means you have a venous blockade. And that's very important because if you decrease the blood coming from an organ, you're not going to have enough oxygenated blood being able to be delivered completely. So in this case, it's a little bit different than the arterial blockade in that you just don't have a, a flow, a um, continual flow. You just have a blockade in the venous system and that's going to cause everything to get backed up. In terms of arterial blockade, you just don't have enough blood going to the organ or to the tissue at all. So there's a little bit of a difference that you need to know. And then number three, the, the third main mechanism of ischemia is shock. And shock is different than arterial or venous blockade because you have generalized decreased perfusion to vital organs. When that happens, when you have a generalized decreased perfusion, our vital organs are not going to be able to survive long. And the reason why is they're not able to handle stress that well. Well, They're very susceptible to being damaged when they're exposed to stress. So in a setting of shock, you're going to see our vital organs organs getting damaged really quickly. You're going to see uh, organ biomarkers increase and it's going to show abnormal activity. Now, ischemia can be caused by multiple things, but the two main things you need to remember is usually ischemia is going to be caused by an embolic event where you have uh, an emboli occurring. So an example of that would be a heart attack. During a heart attack, you have an embolus that causes occlusion of the cardiac, uh, the coronary arteries that supply our, our heart with blood. And when that happens, when that embolism occludes the heart and you have an arterial blockade, you're going to see decreased blood overall or blood flow overall to that uh, organ. And, and that's going to lead to ischemia of the heart tissue and it's going to cause the heart tissue to die off. That's, a, that's one of the main causes of ischemia. The second cause is going to be trauma. Trauma to the tissue is going to result in damage, and that damage is going to cause A, not enough blood going to the tissue, B, it's going to cause not enough blood leaving the tissue, uh, and C, if it's a very extensive and very uh, immersive or, or wide-ranging trauma, a very bad trauma, it can also lead to shock occurring, so, and that's also going to cause ischemia. So this is the main concept you need to remember for ischemia, the, just the basic underlying fact. This is not even going deeper into the, uh, the pathway of ischemia and how it gets damaged, which we're going to discuss later on in biochemistry in our subsequent videos. Right now, we're giving you a very basic understanding in, the, in relationship to hypoxia and cellular injury. So with that being said, that's going to wrap up part one of hypoxia. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and we'll see you back here in the next video.